It's a Middle Eastern country with a very European feel. A nation proud of its ancient history while also looking to the future. Azerbaijan only gained independence from the former Soviet Union 20 years ago, but it has a rapidly growing economy and an ambitious football program. On a recent visit, Sepp Blatter, the FIFA president, opened a new stadium that will be used when Azerbaijan hosts an international tournament next year. This uh, tournament is important for them because it's the first World Cup they organize here in, uh, in a team sport competition and uh, football is so important for them and for us it is important uh, to have a women's uh, competition in another culture. Two years ago there was no organized women's football in Azerbaijan. Now the country has more than 600 players and a competitive league featuring 16 women's teams. Next year's Under-17 World Cup is expected to boost participation even more. It's incredible. You can't stop in the world uh, football for girls and women. You can't stop it. It's impossible. So why we wait here in Azerbaijan? We must do it now. In comparison with uh, Western European countries like Germany, England or Sweden, uh, it's nothing. But we have started and we are really proud of it. Azerbaijan is celebrating its football centenary. British workers introduced the game here in 1911. Football soon became popular in the capital, Baku, and other provincial cities as well. The sport continued to be played even after the country became part of the Soviet Union, with teams from the region playing in competitions organized by the communist state. Yet the sport's most famous Azerbaijan story doesn't even involve a player. When England became world champions for the first time 45 years ago, Jeff Hurst scored a hat-trick in the final. But his second goal was only allowed after one of the match officials intervened. Many people in England, of course, think that the linesman in the 1966 World Cup final was Russian. He is a Russian linesman. But as we all know, he was from Azerbaijan. And interestingly enough, he's a very big figure in the Azeri Football Association. Tofik Baramov became such a respected figure in Azerbaijan's Football Federation that a statue was built in his honour and the national stadium bears his name. And that was the venue for last week's European Championship qualifier against World Cup semi-finalist Germany. Although Azerbaijan lost the match 3-1 and of little chance of qualifying for Euro 2012, they didn't look totally outclassed. Unlike Baku's old city, which is a world heritage site, Azerbaijan football is yet to make a huge impact on the global stage, but everyone in the country is confident it will. Our main goal uh, was to um, um, rediscover uh, old city for uh, each citizen, try to uh, provide a um, um, friendly uh, infrastructure, including tourist uh, infrastructure. Just three years ago, Azerbaijan had only 1,500 registered footballers. Now, there are more than 17,000. Officials say it's only the start. Like the country itself, football in Azerbaijan has a long way to go, but it seems to be heading in the right direction. Alex Thomas, CNN, Azerbaijan.